Caller ID, call forwarding, call waiting, and call blocking. <laughs> I think it's time you cut the blue wire. Cut the blue wire. Save up to $250 on your phone features with Rev Voice. Get Rev Voice. Save money. Coming up tonight on our news. Opposition leader supports health care and insurance professionals who yesterday rejected the current NHI model. That story straight ahead on our news. Amid ongoing concerns over national health insurance, the NHI secretariat is still pushing on. That story straight ahead. Hundreds of derelict vehicles causing a huge fire. That and more tonight on our news. Welcome to our news. I'm Christina McNeil. Thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight, Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis is predicting that the United Healthcare Reform Alliance's dismissal of the current national health insurance model is the first wave of rejection the Christie administration will face from Bahamians who are tired of governments that don't listen. He said he fully supports their position. Vonik Toot reports. FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis says he stands with members of the newly formed alliance, which yesterday rejected the current NHI model. He commended them for sending a bold message to a government which he claims does not listen. I am happy. It's not only the medical profession, but also the insurance industry. And what they are, they're sending a message to the government. And what they're telling the government is, we cannot move forward without proper consultation and involvement of the caregivers and involvement of the insurance companies. We must all, we have the same common goal. We want to ensure that we have a proper health care system. We want to ensure that whatever national health plan we bring forth, that it's workable, it's affordable, and it's sustainable. But we have a government who traditionally do not listen. More than 2,000 healthcare and insurance professionals who strongly oppose national health insurance in its current form have formed the United Healthcare Reform Alliance. They insisted yesterday the plan is flawed and unsuitable for the Bahamas. Dr. Minnis, who is an OBGYN by profession, says he couldn't agree more with his colleagues. I think the medical profession and insurance industry are taking that bold step forward to show the government that listen. This is now the people's time and we will stand up and this is the first wave of the people standing up against governments to ensure that governments in the future listen to the people. So as a doctor, I am so happy that my profession, my professional colleagues are the first to make that bold step. The results of public opinion surveys suggested that 80% of Bahamians believe the country needs NHI. However, men has urged the public to stand up and demand more. And I hope that more people will stand up when government is doing wrong and show them that we will take it no more because we put you here and we will take you out. The opposition leader says an AFNM government would bring forth a universal health care plan that all stakeholders can get behind. Reporting for our news, I'm Vonig Toot. Meantime, a legal consultant for the NHI Secretariat insisted today the UHRA's stance on the current NHI model will not stop the implementation of the controversial program. Simone Davis has that angle. Dillett says if the newly formed alliance does not cooperate with NHI, the scheme would still be implemented as she revealed that the government has a contingency plan to move forward. With everything, we need to ensure that, one, we analyze what the situation is before us, and then, two, map and chart a way forward. And so, of course, we're going to do that. We have our contingency plans in place. Although Dilla did not reveal the details of the government's contingency plans, she defended the current model. Criticisms can always come from the stakeholder community, but what we realize is in this process, as we work together, as we collaborate, those criticisms must come along with recommendations. 
The government planned to roll out the primary health care component of NHI early this year, but announced a delay last month following recommendations from KPMG. Dillett noted that the formation of UHRA was not a surprise because the NHI secretariat read and listened to the concerns of many in the coalition. However, she said now that there is an alliance, it would be much easier to communicate with all medical and insurance professionals involved, as opposed to meeting with nine different groups. We do note that a number of our stakeholders have decided that they will move in a united force. And I believe from the Secretariat's position, as opposed to us having to meet with nine separate stakeholders, we can now meet with one unit so that our stakeholder consultation processes can perhaps be a bit more streamlined now. As the group called on the government to delay the implementation, Dillett suggested that the government would implement the scheme when the model is right and ready. On Sunday, Prime Minister Perry Christie insisted the government is committed to launching NHI this year. Reporting for our news, I'm Simone Davis. Thanks, Simone. Well, huge plumes of smoke could be seen coming from southwest New Providence today as hundreds of derelict vehicles went up in flames. Our Georgie O'Bain was on the scene and filed this report. Firefighters raced to this derelict car lot located opposite the New Providence landfill this afternoon after receiving reports that hundreds of derelict vehicles still containing gas and diesel were ablaze. Fire Chief Walter Evans said the main concern was to stop it from spreading to propane stations located just behind the car lot. Um, when we got here, we met approximately about 300 vehicles, derelict vehicles, which were on blaze. Um, and persons we've received calls that people could have seen um, the heavy plumes of black smoke as far as about five, six miles away. Fire engines ran out of water while fighting the blaze, which according to Evans, delayed efforts to extinguish the fire. Well, water has been a major uh, challenge here um, in that we had to manually truck in water and the, uh, our trucks only carry 1,000 gallons of water and 1,000 gallons of water when you have a fire raging um, very um, ferociously in an environment such as this. It means in that you would need a, a constant supply of water. Um, there are no wells um, in this area whereby we could have extracted the water to have a consistent supply. And so that has one of been one of the challenges that we've had here today. Tall Pines MP Leslie Miller, who was forced to pick up his grandchildren early from the Meridian School due to the fire, says he thinks the cause of the fire was arson. This has to stop. I can imagine what those parents are going through. Not the parents who have the kids in school, but imagine my constituents in, in Victoria Gardens and Jubilee Gardens. It must stop. I wasn't even aware that they were having that um, 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 demonstration last week. I see a lot of uh, light-skinned people. I don't know where the hell they come from. Um, maybe they've been affected or the best, which is good because they feel what we feel now, you know? Owner of the derelict car lot, Larry Burroughs, declined an interview. The lot was once located on the Marshall Road area and was moved for safety reasons eight months ago. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie O'Bain. And the parking lot of the Traffic Police Division on the East-West Highway became a crime scene last evening after two men were shot at a separate location. <laughs> Officer in charge of the Central Detective Unit, Chief Superintendent Clayton Fernander, describes how it all unfolded. Uh, they were waiting on the light to change when a black uh, vehicle, heavily tinted, uh, pulled alongside them. Shots were fired from that uh, vehicle into the vehicle on the stoplight. Uh, the driver of that vehicle, uh, he was able to speed off and drove directly here at traffic uh, station. That's when police say the driver realized his passenger had been shot multiple times. The passenger was pronounced dead in the parking lot of the police traffic division. The victim has been identified by police as Akeem Brennan. Police say the driver was also shot and was transferred to Princess Margaret Hospital for treatment. This as police began combing the scene of the shooting and the scene outside the traffic division for anything that can help in their investigation and we're appealing to members of the public who would have been on the Robinson Road area at that light, at that junction, any joggers on Robinson Road, the uh, uh, park, the track area there, who would have seen or heard anything, to please come forward so that we could advance uh, this investigation. As always, police are asking anyone with information to contact them at 328-TIPS or the nearest police station. 
After the break, anger mounts over working conditions at the post office. Stay with us.